It's the first Sunday in Advent, so what better way to continue our exploration of Abba's voyage than with their very own and very first Christmas song, Little Things, as if I perfectly planned this out. And Little Things is also coming out as Abba's Christmas single next Friday. Hey, hey. so Little Things is Abba's Christmas song and many people feel that it's a simple song, that it's just nice or even a little cheesy, but I have to say I never thought that it was corny at all from the very first time I listened to it. And as much as the title suggests, it's not just a little song at all. There are so many layers here, incredible complexities in the lyrics, in the music and in the structure, but I agree, it feels very simple. So this song, I would say, is one of the prime examples from Voyage of how ABBA is able to mix simplicity with complexity in the most elegant way. So let's take a look into little things and start with the music. The song starts off with just Benny's piano. Agneta is more to the right, Frida to the left, but I feel their vocals meld together so beautifully here, it's heartwarming and emotional. But we do have the feeling that, oh, it's just a little piano and two voices, but of course, there is so much more going on in the soundscape. Before the second verse and chorus starts, Harpsichord and strings join the piano, but also bells, xylophones, flute and clarinet, which make for the most perfect Christmas vibe. Benny describes the song as a minuet-style piece, which certainly comes across when you listen to the isolated tracks. It is also at this point in the song that Benny plays a few notes of a popular children's song. This is a lullaby that has its roots in France, but has been adapted into other languages and countries over the decades. Here on YouTube, Frederick Möller made us aware of the Swedish title Blinka Lila Hjana, and the German version is in fact a traditional song for Christmas. The tune was actually even adapted by Mozart, which in turn kind of makes this another of many nods to classical music and composers on voyage. And Benny plays this melody in variation so that it's a seamless part of Little Things. And when the second chorus and verse ends, he drifts away, the tempo changes, and the song culminates in this amazing piece for children's choir, which is another melody that Benny used 15 years ago for a ringtone he composed and reused it in 2007 on the song Gunnar Visa on the third album with his band. And with a children's choir, it is only the second time ever that we have other voices than Abba's own on their recordings. And the first time was, of course, on the Voulez-vous album with I Have a Dream, which until now was kind of the closest to the Christmas spirit and was also released as a single for the Christmas market. Another song on Voyage, Just a Notion, also harkens back to the Voulez-vous sessions, but I also want to take a closer look at that Bao album again, because here we have another connection to Voulez-vous with the song Crush on You, which was written around that time. Sometimes it's just amazing how it all interconnects. I was really moved on my very first listening when this part with the children's choir started, because I was so familiar with that beautiful ringtone melody for years, and to have it now as part of a brand new ABBA song, wow. And with this children's choir, we also have one of many ironies in the song because they sound so American. Of course they do, because it's the choir from the International School of Stockholm, like on I Have a Dream, but it's such a great and funny contrast to the lady's slight Swedish accent. Of course, one of the most moving parts has got to be the final line when they sing that it could be a song that my grandma sings. Overall, I really love the melody of the song, especially how incredible some of the lines continue to climb up like when they sing Thanks Old Friend for packing Christmas stockings full of nice little things. Or as a brand new day is dawning on this lovely Christmas morning, it's our children playing with their new toys. Now it's one thing to write extensive melody lines like these, but we really need to give credit to Pjörn too, who is able to fill those lines where we have so many short notes that require a lot of one-syllable words. Björn does this, I would say, as smoothly as Benny writes the music. And speaking of those lyrics, well, as the music suggests, it's sweet and innocent, a song for children really. Or so you thought. Those lyrics are not only ambiguous, 
They are dubious. Björn was very naughty here. Joey Richard Ward here on YouTube was the first one to let me know that there is an undertone to it all. And again, Diego confirmed it in one of his videos. Listen to this. Little things like my gentle touch. Why don't we stay in bed for a while? Little things like your naughty eyes. You'd consider bringing me a breakfast tray, but there's a price. So it really seems to be about a horny couple waking up on Christmas morning, thanking Santa for the stocking stuffers that are keeping their kids distracted while the two of them have a little private fun. Very clever here. And while I wouldn't say that this is clearly on the surface level of the song, there certainly is something going on here. And the children's choir at the end, Joey concluded, was just the top of it all. So again, Little Things seems like a cute, inconspicuous little song, but there is so much going on. It's pouring with melodies, the lyrics are ambiguous, but it's all done so elegantly and seamlessly. It literally is, as the lyrics say, amazing that so little can achieve so much. The song is now being released as ABBA's fourth single from Voyage, as a Christmas single, and it has a gorgeous artwork and beautiful merchandise too. We have a scarf, Little Things socks, a 500-piece puzzle, and a knitted jumper, for which Björn acted as a model to show us the beauty of the jumper, but of course he would model for his very own jumper that he knitted together with Ian McKellen. And it looks like we also be getting a very special music video for the song, and apparently ABBA are very involved in this, as Diego told us. And with all this great marketing, it still seems to be up to debate if the song is a good candidate to top the charts of the Christmas market. Is it catchy enough? My feeling is that a song like this was only possible on this very album, or maybe on The Visitors. If ABBA had done a Christmas song during the heyday, like in the mid or late 70s, I'm sure it would have been much more pop-oriented. These are valid points, but to me that's exactly why I'm very happy that they are doing a Christmas song with this album only. There is nothing cheesy about it for me, it's complex and elegant at the same time, even though it does sound very simple on its surface. Maybe it's too simple and sweet for the charts, maybe it isn't, we will see. Benny said that it's really not a Christmas song of the caliber like the ones played a billion times every Christmas, and that it's just a small song and any success would surprise him. But to me, it really is the most perfect ABBA Christmas song I could have ever wished for. And above all, it serves a very important purpose on this album too, which we will talk about next time. And with that, I wish you a peaceful Christmas season. We will continue our voyage exploration, of course, but before that, we will have some visitors very soon. Alright, until then, Edo! Hey